everyone, it's Amy. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint the shields of the Stormcast Eternals Annihilators. This will cover painting gold, dark metallic and the magical glowing effect. I've left the shield off the model for ease of painting and I'd recommend you do the same too. So let's get started with the base coats. I've started with a black undercoat, however you can use any colour undercoat for this. To begin, I'm going to start to base coat the sections of the shield that are going to be gold. For this, I'm using Retributor Armour. The second element I'm going to be base coating will be the darker metallic sections on the shield. For this, I'm going to use Iron Warriors. When I apply this, I'm careful not to get any on the gold, but I'm not worrying about any of the other inner elements on the model because I'm going to be painting those next. The lightning detail around the central face design on the shield I'm going to be painting in white. For this I've chosen to use Grey Seer. Before I move on to shading the shield I'm firstly going to just use a bad and black to neaten up the recesses and also the hand holding the shield. The base coats are now all done and now we're ready to move on to shading. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're new to Siege Studios, we are a premium miniature painting service with over 50 artists. Here at Siege, we offer four painting levels, ranging from our bronze premium gaming quality up to our platinum competition standard. For your free quote today, follow the link in the description of this video. The first element on the shield I'm going to shade is the gold. I've decided to go for a purple to shade the gold because purple is opposite yellow on the colour wheel and gold is essentially yellow. This means that purple complements yellow really nicely. Now that first pass of Magos purple is dry, I'm going to use Magos purple again but this time straight from the pot without thinning it down. For the dark metallic I'm going to shade it using Null Oil. For this I'm just using it straight out of the pot but I'm going to watch how much is in the brush. After that initial null oil is dry, I want to add some further shading to the dark metallic. For this, I thin down a bad and black with water and glaze this into the small recessed areas on the shield. The shades are now all dry and I can now move on to highlighting all of the elements on the shield. To begin, I'm going to start to build up the highlights on the dark metallic. Firstly, using Vallejo Gunmetal, I apply a highlight to all of the raised edges on the dark metallic. To further enhance the highlights on the dark metallic, I use Vallejo Silver to pick out the edges and also some random areas to give the impression of it glistening in the light. These highlights bring the sheen back into the metallic too, which were uh, previously dulled down with the shade. Moving on to highlighting the gold. Firstly, I use Scale 75 Elven Gold to apply a layer to the gold to brighten it back up. I apply this over most of the gold, leaving that purple in the recesses. To make the gold stand out a little bit more, I apply a final edge highlight using Scale 75 Citrine Alchemy. I run this along all of the edges and along the writing and the central face design on the shield. I'm now going to start to build up the effect of the magical glow. Firstly, using Sotek Green, I thin this down on the palette with water and then run this into all of the recesses and cracks on the shield around that lightning design. Don't worry about getting this onto the white because we can easily neaten that up. To brighten up that magical glow, I'm going to now add a second brighter colour into the recesses using Baharoth Blue. Much the same as previously, I thin this down on the palette with water and then run it into the recesses to build up that bright blue glow. Now I neaten up the white, if necessary, using Grey Seer before giving it an edge highlight using Vallejo Model Colour Cold White. I'm now going to pick out the gem in the centre of the shield. I've decided to go with purple gems for my army as a nice spot colour. To begin, I've used a bad and black to separate the gem out from the gold. And then I base coat using Xerius Purple and add successive highlights using Gene Stealer Purple and then Slanesh Grey. Finally, I'm now going to highlight the hand holding the shield, and for this, I'm going to paint it in the colours of the Anvils of the Helden Hammer, which is the Stormhurst I've chosen for my army. It's already had a base coat of a bad and black, and I'm now going to add a first highlight using Dark Reaper. 
For this, I apply it slightly thicker than normal um, to begin to create a transition to the bright edge highlight that we'll add later. I don't worry too much about how thick it looks because I can easily refine it and neaten it up later. Next, I'm going to use Fenrisian Grey to add that second brighter highlight. For these highlights, I'm using a triple zero brush for the best control and I try my best to mark out the edges, but again, I'm not worrying if they're a little bit thick or a little bit uneven because I can neaten it up next. Now I'm going to use Dark Reaper to refine the highlights. I use this to cut back into that brighter Fenrisian Grey to neaten up and sharpen those final edge highlights. Doing this is a very back and forth process. Um, remember, you can use that Dark Reaper if you need to. You can also use a bad black to neaten up that. Um, and it's just essentially doing this back and forth until you get the look that you're happy with. Finally, I use a bad and black and thin this down on the palette into a glaze. I use this to glaze over the Dark Reaper highlight, which thins it down and blends it all together. The shield is now complete and it's ready to glue onto the prime of my unit of Annihilators. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have fun painting your Annihilators. Thank you very much for watching and thank you as always for all of your support. I'll see you next time.